are back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I'm your host, Spicy Mari, and joined with me is my beautiful co-host, Dr. Allie. What up? We have a special guest in the building, the beautiful songstress, Audra Bryant. And she's coming here today to join in on the conversation about beauty, internal, external, the scars that we bear. And she has a special story of her own uh, that she wants to share as well with us that really inspired her and her music. So uh, before we get started, don't forget to click and subscribe. Make sure that you uh, download, like us, all of that good stuff. Uh, because if not, my husband will kill us. Um, yeah, so. he's a big guy too. He works out a lot. So. <laughs> Audra, okay, you have to tell us a little bit of background about your story because it's really deep in how you, you know, discovered your passion for music. So, um, when I was a year and a half, I was actually severely burned. Um, and between the ages of two and 16, I had six surgeries. Mm. And I did not look at myself change clothes in the mirror until I was 25. Wow. So, what did you yeah. do? You flipped like, the mirrors around, you took them down, you. I literally just would avoid. It was just, a, I would take my clothes off, put my, you know, nightgown on or whatever it is that I'm wearing, and I would just avoid looking at myself. Mm. I would barely glance at the mirror if I passed by it, so. Wait, how'd you do your makeup? Oh, yeah, I would look at my face. Oh. But not but my just chest, wouldn't, not Okay, my so it's just like, mm -hmm. you just would make sure that you avoided my that altogether. So, yeah. Is it monumental today that you're wearing your shoulders out? I know, seeing all the got, skin. Like, is this a big deal? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's always a big deal mm -hmm. to be able to, at this point in my life, being able to show without even thinking twice about it, like, um, because I never mm -hmm. would have worn something like this a few, you know, years ago. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to what be did you, free enough. What did you attribute that to, though, uh, in this realization of, you know, not looking at yourself? What did you find out about why you were avoiding looking at yourself? Um, well, I just kind of felt like my scars were a mistake, that I would be pretty mm. if I didn't have them. I'd be prettier if I didn't have them. Mm. Um, it just felt very wrong. So I just felt like it was a mistake. I was not going to fully accept it. Mm -hmm. And I would be accepting my scars by looking at them and, you know, admiring mm -hmm. them or liking them or embracing them in any way. So... When, yeah. when do you think you had that idea for the first time, this idea that something was wrong with you? Because mm -hmm. one, you're really young and you're mm -hmm. not totally self-aware. Mm -hmm. So when do you think was that moment when you were like, oh, I'm different? So uh, I started uh, taking dance class. Like uh, I was in ballet and tap at the ages, the age three and four. So in ballet class, you have to wear these mm -hmm. unitards. And so like kids come up to you and they're like, hey, what happened? Mm -hmm. What's that? What's that? What you know? And as a kid, you're just trying to fit in. Like you just, just want to live your life. You know, I'm trying to learn <laughs> first position, in. second position, all That's that it. kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, plie. You know, relevé. <laughs> you know, like I'm just trying to do that. And like they're just pointing, looking, and they're just mm, curious. Yeah. It's not that they're trying to be mean, mm -hmm, yeah. but for me, I was just like, okay. So that was the end of dance class for me. Mm -hmm. And that was also, you know, anywhere I would go, it was, I just felt very much different. Like I would wear these joped vests to mm -hmm. kind of press down the scars. So it was a lot of different things that went into it. And a joped vest feels like, a girdle around oh, your chest, oh, right. okay. like pressing it mm -hmm. down. And, you know, then even through um, adolescence, like seeing girls, you know, by the time, you know, they're getting their bodies, their shapes and stuff, and they're wearing cute outfits, like cute little tops. And I just was like, oh, I can't wear that. I mm -hmm. can't show myself. I don't have cleavage, like all these different things because the scar was in the middle of my my mm. breast so i was just like okay i'm weird this is not right I, something happened that. this was wrong yeah so i made it wrong and so yeah and so that stuck with me with me for a long time so i know that we need just a little bit more we're gonna have to dive a little bit deeper because i know mm -hmm. everyone's gonna want to know what started the fire how did the fire happen actually it wasn't even it wasn't a fire it was actually, when I was a year and a half, it was something, like, honestly, it was coffee. 
Coffee? Wow. Coffee. Oh I my god, it. coffee? Coffee. I, I say was, that because I've been, okay. have had coffee thrown on me. So that's why I'm like, oh my god, like my mom could kill me. Yeah. It's, no, it can be really, really hot, yeah. And so, not everyone's skin keloids, mm -hmm. but my skin keloids. Oh no. So it's one of those things where I was a year and a half. Like, my dad and my grandma were there at the table, and I'm just toddling around, and I just reached up on the table and pulled coffee off oh, of no. the table. It was very, very hot, and it actually did splash on my face, but then it got all over, let's see, like, my oh. shoulder, my chest. Coffee. Coffee. See, I'm yeah. thinking, like, when I hear the song, I'm thinking it's, you know, burns from, you know, uh, uh, the house was on fire, right? Like... Mm -hmm. That is crazy. That could happen to anyone's child. Mm -hmm. And the, wow. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why I was like, this is a mistake. Like, if th that one little moment mm -hmm. changed mm. my life. Mm. Like, something oh. like that. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Like, I don't even drink coffee to this day. Now, I don't even know if it's because of that, but I know that I've never been a coffee drinker. Damn. Yeah. Had no... I, so, that... So, that... I can I can understand that is a mistake. It's not like it was a that was simply you just being a child. Being a kid. Yeah. yeah. And now you and you've had to go through these years suffering, you know, with this lack mm -hmm. of, you know, or this feeling of not being as attractive or beautiful as everyone mm -hmm. else because you you know, mm -hmm. your scars. But how did you get to this place of, you know what? I am beautiful. Like how did you turn that on? So, um fast forward into adulthood like you know like my early 20s I feel like it, it, it was crazy because I would you know I have boyfriends mm -hmm. and stuff like that and you know when it's time to be close and be intimate and as I was saying kind of earlier I was like um we can be close but I'm gonna keep this shirt on yeah. <laughs> yeah. like you know like you can't see me you can see a part of me but not all of me mm -hmm. And and then I noticed also like my friends like I would tug on my clothes like certain clothes like for the most part I would wear crew neck shirts or turtlenecks, mm -hmm. but you know sometimes if the collar like I might have to pull it up or whatever and my friends would see me just kind of doing that and mm -hmm. they're like why are you doing that mm -hmm. like it's not a big deal and I'm like ah oh, yes it is it's a big deal and it was it was weird because then I said you know I started to say well nobody else cares like the guys i'm dating right. they don't care they are still going to come for you okay see, like, like, <laughs> right? if a guy's focusing on that <laughs> he has no right to be in your bedroom anyways very true right very true but it, it felt like everybody else yeah. could embrace the scars but you. my scars but me and so i was like it just kind of made me think and so then i started like just like i would pray and i would ask god like why would you want me to be in the entertainment industry where mm -hmm. everybody is beautiful and perfect, mm -hmm. and I'm not at all perfect. Like, I have this giant scar, like, what are you trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. And over the years, I felt like I finally was just like, kind of put it in my spirit. Well, everybody has scars. Mm -hmm. Some have them on the outside, yep. and some have them on the inside. Preach on that. <laughs> and so that, was the moment when I finally kind of got that like that was the only thing that made sense to me was I was like oh well I have to embrace these scars then if I'm gonna do anything yeah because I can't just run around with turtlenecks on all yeah. day and, <laughs> and pull it up on my clothes. In LA. <laughs> yeah, no. I thought it was deep how earlier you said that the idea of looking at them and maybe accepting them was so uncomfortable for you. Just the idea oh, yeah. of being like, oh no, that's okay. I can embrace them. Yeah. So like, I think that's just really beautiful that you were able to finally come to a place where you were like, well, this is a part of who I am. Yeah, and it took time. I mean, it wasn't like mm -hmm. an overnight, like, oh yeah, I'm good now. It. I had to face the mirror, mm. literally face the mirror and like look at myself. And so I started off with like glances, mm. like okay. like the eye test. Oh, see, yeah. we call that like, that's <laughs> gradual exposure. Yeah. That's exposure therapy where you mm. start with something small mm -hmm. and then you grow to something bigger. It's like you glance for a second. Yeah. Then you glance for 10 seconds. Yep. Then, you know, 15. Now she's dancing in the mirror naked. Yes, yes. absolutely. Which is something I can absolutely. barely do. Oh, I'm oh man. Yes, if I'm that's too what bloated, I'm saying. I, have, I have a hard time myself. I look in the mirror like, oh, no, not today. But, yeah, and that that's what it, it, but you have to, like, 
you have to do it. You okay. have to say to yourself, okay, I have to get over this. I have to accept myself. And you you just do the steps. You do your mirror work. That's what I kind of called it, like my okay. mirror so work. So what you're saying is you can have sex with the lights on now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. I already told her I was going to be coming for her. Yes. Like, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going to get you, girl. I'm going to get you yes. in the hot seat. <laughs> There's a lot of people that can't do that. Man. Oh, yeah. This, this is true. No, this that is true. That is a skill. Because we all, so yours are scars, but we all have our mm -hmm. own insecurities. Yeah. You know, each person has their thing that they're suffering from where they're uncomfortable to just be seen. Mm -hmm. You know, but whether it is, you know, our, our, our skin or our, um, body weight which is i suffer from that all the time i'm like don't touch me i am 10 pounds overweight right now like we all have our specific issues so you're mm -hmm. not you're not alone and there's a lot of women yeah. that feel like how you do that don't have maybe the physical scars yeah. they just feel like that yeah mm -hmm. and so it's what what you're experiencing is extremely common but what we want everybody to always get from the spicy life is you know how to spice up their lives how to get to this place you know of uh you know this self-awareness and mm -hmm. you know passion and you know that way they can get to this place of confidence and be able to express themselves mm -hmm. the way that you do in your music Yes. And you know what? And the thing is, is that everybody can get to that space. Mm. You just have to want to be there. Mm -hmm. I think you have to want to get out of this space of insecurity and just like, even if it gets to a space of self-loathing, you have to say, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to love myself. And sometimes you have to force yourself to love yourself. And that's what I had to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just like, and I couldn't have written my song. I couldn't have written Scars if I hadn't gotten over it. I wanted, like, for years, I said, I'm going to write a song called Scars. I'm going to write a song called Scars. And it never came. It just, it never, it never came. I tried, and it was not mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting because I, I, when I even, when I started to write the song, I thought it was going to be a sad song because I had so much negativity kind of associated mm -hmm. with my scars. But when it came, it wasn't a sad song. Oh, yeah. Your music <laughs> video, you're like. <laughs> yeah, she was all in. She was all, I know. She was going. She was like, yeah, ah. I know. I like it. It was like easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> I was like, okay. I see yes. you. I see you. Miss confident. And you know what? And when I tell you, that's because it was years of the opposite. Yeah. Mm. Like, sometimes you're like, look, like, you, you've been in a house all day. When you get out at night, you like, hey, let's go. We turning up. Mm. Like, that's how it felt. It was just like, but I there's been something in a, to that, though. Yeah. Like, this story that you told yourself of it being ugly, of it, you know, you not being, you know, worthy of, you know, these other people's mm. love or, you know, whatever story that you told yourself, because I know that's a repetitive one for a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, women. Mm -hmm. But it's this, you know, I'm not good enough and I don't meet society's standards of beauty mm -hmm. uh, because we all define beauty differently but yeah. I do feel like there's this underlining uh, ideal that we all have in our head of what we've seen in the magazines or what we've seen on mm -hmm. television yeah. and media and especially like social media and you can look at Instagram Back and in the day with say, magazines, and now it's social media. Now, yeah, now it's with you everywhere you go. And you're like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Oh my God, her body's so perfect. Her yeah. face is flawless. Like, I was 10 years old going into my mom's room crying, saying no man is ever going to want to marry me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how at deep 10, it I can't was. believe you thought about the 10 marriage. Exactly. Exactly. That's but that's in little girls' heads. Was your yes. mom married? Your mom was married to your father um, during this time? Not at that time. They had been divorced. Okay. They were divorced. Mm -hmm. But it was one of those things where they do, like, society puts in your head as a little girl, mm -hmm. like, marriage and, you know, kids Babies. and perfect mm -hmm. life and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then when you don't feel like you fit into that perfect life, because you don't feel perfect, you don't feel like you're enough, then it's just like, well, that isn't going to be for me. That's not going to happen for me. And so I think we have to work so much harder to, like, accept yourself mm -hmm. because there's so many different images coming oh, yeah. at you. It's, it's kind of like what you said earlier. It's like it's, it's this constant fight toward loving self because you always have this information that's telling you you're not skinny enough, you're not tall enough, you're not light enough, you're not dark enough, your hair's not long enough, your hair's not short enough. It's always, there's always something yeah. that you're not doing. And if you let that get you down, it's like, it could take you all the way down. Like when I was like in junior high, I remember one time I actually found myself in my shower using Comet to try to bleach my skin, oh my God. right? 
legitimately thought I was, I was like well it cleans the bathtub so it's gonna clean me like I'm gonna get this off because I hated my complexion so much mine was my hair you know I didn't know it was black until people would tell me like why is your hair you don't look like a normal Mexican <laughs> and so I, that's how that was how I started to become more aware like mm -hmm. Like I knew my family, we're all mixed. Everyone's mm -hmm. Mexican and black, but I never, they never had ethnic question, like mm -hmm. conversations mm -hmm. with us. But I was really insecure about my hair. Like, why is my hair frizzier and curlier than everybody else's? Like, why can't it be tamed? Mm -hmm. And that was how I started to. I used to pray, please give me that blonde straight hair. I remember mm -hmm. that when I was younger. I wanted the hair like the little white girls. Yeah, yeah, because it's this, it's this perception that there's this one norm. And and I would say when we were growing up. There really was a very limited uh, beauty norm, which was like, like when you look at like the evolution of beauty, there's this kind of concept that basically we look for things that are beautiful that indicate whether that person is, is worthy of procreation, mm -hmm. yes. right? Waist hip ratio, you know, your waist has to be smaller than your hips because that indicates that you're a female and not a male because men have a waist hip ratio that's closer to one, whereas women's is closer to 0.6. And, you know, and then like things like pathogen resistance and health and symmetry and all of these things are things that we look for. And then like on top of that, in the United States, we look for things like small jaw lines and large eyes, mm -hmm. fair skin and long hair. Your profile you know, being uh, proportionate. It, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. all of these and all of these things. And then you add on a lot of people's perceptions that you have to have this type of nose and this type of lip. You need to be keen. And now it's about having a straight up fat ass. Like, <laughs> that's what was, yes. like people want... Big hips, big butt, small waist, you know, and not everyone's built like that. Like, for me, I am not built like that. They did a study, though. They you said know? that Naomi Campbell's body was the prototype of the, like, perfect measurements of what a body is supposed to look like. Hmm. But, mind you, only Naomi Campbell looks like Naomi Campbell. And that's it. I think they said something like only, like, like 0.5% uh, of the population is, uh, like, eligible to actually be, like, a model. Like, someone who actually looks like a model. Like, yeah. the average American, like, when you go around... Like, and, and what's interesting is the the larger Americans get, the smaller models get. Hmm. It's because this is what my dissertation was on. <laughs> my dissertation was on human body appearance and cosmetic and and co yeah. surgery. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, and body dysmorphia is in there, but it's like the larger people get because we have a society, everyone's getting heavier. Food is not healthy. Hmm. We're eating more. And so we have a society that is not seeing themselves represented on social media or in, in the press or in, on television shows. And luckily we're seeing, like, I think that we're starting to see a shift in that mm -hmm. over the past few years where we have actresses that don't always look exactly that way, which is why I like British television. Do you ever watch that? Like oh, BBC? Yeah. They're actors. There's a show with Idris Elba that's oh, really good. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Luther. Ah. <laughs> oh, my God. Idris? <laughs> yes. Idris, if you're Father. watching. <laughs> Hi. But... <laughs> But yeah, British time. television, I think, has a much more realistic representation of what people look like. Not everybody's a supermodel. Not everybody's a size mm -hmm. zero. People have, like, normal faces and Their wrinkles. Teeth aren't and perfect. Yeah, sure. they have, like, normal <laughs> lives. Like, I have wrinkles on my face. Like, why should we pretend like we don't, you know? So... Yeah. But it's just unfortunate that we don't get to see, like, why can't the person with scars be in the cover girl commercial? Why can't the person with, you know, untamed hair be in the pantene? Like, I understand mm -hmm. that they're trying to sell products, but... That's not what people really look like. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that we're trained to have an eye of only liking beauty. If we saw the norm on television, mm -hmm. I don't think if, that we would not purchase. I think that we've become additioned or conditioned mm -hmm. to like only buying from this look. Mm -hmm. Like that has to have this commercial look. And if it doesn't, we we can't watch it. Yeah. We're spoiled brats. We really are. <laughs> and also, and beauty norms change a little bit over time. Like, for example, like back in like... Europe in like the 1400s, it was really in style to have very pale skin, right? People would like take um, like uh, arsenic. They would eat little bits of arsenic, which is super poisonous, so that they could make themselves look paler because it would basically wow. kind of low level kill you. <laughs> and so, so it would make you look, it would make so you look. That color right before green. <laughs> yeah, right before dead. Like right before you die. That co yeah, that color right before you die. That's the color they wanted, like kind of a bluish hint and uh, tinge and like in china you saw the same thing where they would wear like lead-based makeup to make their skins look extra look extra pale because it showed that they didn't have to work outside right because at that time in mm. history people who worked outside had darker skin That's the worker. but now having darker skin shows that you have time to vacation because nobody works outside anymore yeah times have changed who works sure. outside so now sure. everyone wants to go get tan because it shows that you were just hanging out on like the Maldives or you were hanging out mm -hmm. in like Hawaii or doing whatever so it shows you have time to leisure for leisure and so it's like so norms kind of shift with societal expectations society pushes 
these norms. People say like, oh no, we just like what we like. And I'm kind of like, I call bullshit on that. Because no, I'm like, no. We are told what society, to like. Yeah, there we go. Absolutely. Society definitely dictates it. That is, it is not a we make it, they mm-hmm. follow. No, we are following the, the what we're, what exactly what exactly. we're seeing. Exactly. The fact that <laughs> Kylie Jenner can say that she's off of Snapchat. I, I just don't follow Snapchat anymore. And 1.5 billion, <laughs> like you just lost it like that. How you just lose 1.5 billion? Just, uh, that's so wow. crazy to me that... And that's not, oh, I, I too do not like Snapchat. No, that is, <laughs> you are being influenced yeah. in this moment. You are a follower and not a leader. Yeah. Absolutely. Most people are easily influenced. I mean, it's interesting you said you are a follower and not a leader, but that's what we do all day is yeah, follow I, people. They, literally, literally. Following like literally 500 people. people. Yeah. Follow. <laughs> follow like, me. We're, yeah. we're taught to be followers. And, yeah. I, and I think that, like, the best that I could hope for people now is like, okay, if, if sometimes you can't help but to be influenced by what you see in your society, but how is the influence affecting you? Like sometimes, like if you have low self-esteem, if you're looking at yourself and you don't think that you are incredibly gorgeous, right? if you do not look at your body and say, oh, I accept you, like flaws and all I accept you wrinkles and whatever Mm -hmm. if you don't accept it then that's the work that you need to do I feel like on an individual basis what does that look like what is work because they need to know what what the the work work is is. Mm -hmm. okay so the work is is that okay if you're at a space where you have self-doubt and you're just like oh I don't like this oh I don't like that I mean just with my scars I have to Mm -hmm. be honest like this was a lot of work to accept something that I felt like was the most ugly thing in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, literally. Mm. So, how do I do that? I say, one, okay, I need to accept this. If nothing changes, like, I went to doctors to, I've you know, I've had surgeries. I've had, six like, surgeries. six different surgeries. Like, I've gone to doctors and had them inject things into my, into my scars Steroids. to, like, flatten them down. Mm-hmm. And... And but then and that hurt, and then it puffed back up anyway. So okay, if I cannot change mm-hmm. anything, if I cannot lose one pound, if I cannot change mm. anything, can I accept myself now the way I am? If your answer is no or I don't know, then there's work to do. So you say, you know what? I'm going to accept myself the way I am right now, and you start doing your mirror work. You start doing affirmations Mm -hmm. and telling yourself that I am incredible. I am beautiful just the way I am. Like, dancing in the mirror. Like, I mean, literally make your mirror your friend. Because the better you look to yourself, Mm -hmm. the better you're going to look to the world. And when I tell you, I mean, like, I've... I've done mirror work to the point where I said I am beautiful. Like, er once in the morning when I was brushing my teeth and once at night when I was brushing my teeth. And I did that for three months just so I could feel comfortable saying it and receiving it Mm -hmm. from like just period because I felt uncomfortable. When I went like I started in October, I went to visit my friend in Detroit in October, my homeboy. and He was like, oh, hey, how you doing? Whatever. I went back in Christmas after I did my three months of I Am Beautiful. <laughs> he was like, for some reason, you look better. You look mm. like a I looked, <laughs> Yes. Like, I, nothing that's changed. The that's the prescription. I'm going to start saying every single day. Yes. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I am so beautiful. Like, literally, nothing changed. I didn't get a hair. I didn't change my hair. Mm-hmm, I didn't put mm-hmm. extra makeup on. I literally was just saying my affirmations. And I started to believe it. Like, you're going to start to believe yourself eventually. Mm-hmm. Well, they say you can't believe or put, like, you can't think a negative thought while saying a positive thought out loud. So if you start saying those positive thoughts, eventually you'll, you know, you'll be saying mm-hmm. it enough that you'll start to believe it. But that can be a challenge, too, especially if you're saying it and you would never convince yourself, though. What about the times when you're saying it over and over and you're not doing anything about it, though? Well, Cause don't you need to back it up with some actions? Well, I think that the actions are your one is your intention. Your intention is I'm going to accept myself. Mm-hmm. And then your actions of, okay, I'm going to speak life to myself. Mm-hmm. I am beautiful. I accept this. And when looking at yourself sometimes, when you look at yourself long enough, you're going to find something awesome. This is almost like hearing a song. 
when you hear a song for the first time on the radio, you may not, uh, okay, it's all right. But it gets better, it gets better. The more they play it, mm -hmm. the more it starts to like, okay, mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. Like, oh, I like the way that happened. You know, <laughs> like that's what started to happen. I was like, you know, that does kind of look a little like a leaf. Like, oh, that does kind of look like I could have possibly done that on purpose. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> like, it. it does, you know, yeah. so you start to, like, see different things. And then not only is it just my scar, but it affected my breasts as well because the way it, it like, burned, it was right in the middle. So I don't have, like I said, I don't have cleavage. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things where it was just like, okay, but are you going to be okay with that? Yeah. But are you going to be okay with something that you can't change? Mm -hmm. If you never change. You, from the profile, I'm seeing a little Jada Pinkett. You know, you people get have oh, said that. Oh, yes. my God. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm totally seeing it. Get, wait, yes. get the camera your profile. Let them see. Let them see. Jada, Jada. Zoom in. Oh, we got the zoom. Dang, I'm What's seeing up, Jada. What's up, girl? <laughs> no, but yes. I, I love what you're saying because I do think that the, the, the way to get to acceptance is definitely language-based. Because I think sometimes we don't think about it in those terms because we feel things, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that our feelings a lot of times come from language. They come from thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you have to first identify like the types of words that you want to use. And for a lot of people, it is hard to just say like, I'm beautiful. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so, so what we do with people when they have that as a problem, we do what we call successive approximations where you start with something else that might be smaller that they actually might believe. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you start with something small, like, you know what? I really love my left eye. This, my left eye is like everything to me, mm -hmm. and I love her, mm -hmm. and she's beautiful. And so you start and by you saying, like, it. I love my left eye, because I believe that I actually mm -hmm. You gotta start somewhere. Yeah. And you know what? And then next week, my right eye looks like my left eye. <laughs> Maybe I like my eyes. Maybe I like both of them, you yeah. know? And then you start to, like, move forward. Because, like, I feel for some people, they have such a hard time. Like, mm -hmm. And I love that you were just able to say, like, I'm beautiful. Yeah. And I'm going to believe this. No, but for no, other like, people, it's it wasn't a lot easy. harder than that. Yeah, yeah. Like, trust me. Yeah. It's not like I believed it at first. Mm -hmm. No. Like, I literally would look at old pictures of myself, like baby pictures. And mm -hmm. I was like, ugh. Like I, I, I literally looked at baby pictures of myself. I'm sure you were cute, baby. Like, too. I'm sure you were cute. And like, when I look at, I'm like, oh my god! Like, like now I can look at myself and say, oh my gosh, I was so cute. Like, but what about the chubby pictures? I looked at the chubby pictures of myself, and I was just like, like those oh. junior high chubby, like those ten oh my year old, god, like the ten year old pictures. pictures. Yeah. Yes, ten, ten is the worst oh time to be alive. God. It was. It is hard. So it's hard. Eight was bad. It's for a hard. Me. It's a hard time. Eight was really bad. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And, but looking at those pictures, I was just like, oh, no, I got to hide this from the world. Nobody mm, can ever see this. Mm, right. But I think that's what we do is that we just continue. We, we hide ourselves. We're like, the, we hide the 10 year old pictures. And then we like, oh, the 25 year old. I don't like the way. Oh, the 30. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so it's not easy. But you have to give yourself mm -hmm. that opportunity to get past it. Give yourself that opportunity to love yourself. Mm. And I think that's because we're always taught to love other people. Mm -hmm. We're taught to love God. We're taught to love our children. Mm -hmm. But nobody teaches us to love ourselves. Nope. Never. Or how. Or they'll just tell you to do it. Exactly. They never tell you how to do it. I, t I totally agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so we always put everyone in, you know, the hot seat. You've been doing good. You've been sharing. You've been vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But now we got to ask you some spicy questions. Spicy. Okay. Okay, it's the end of the world. What are you doing? Eat, sleep, singing, or sex? Sex. Oh, we got another sex. I thought you loved to sing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hollywood crush that you would crush? Gosh. Anybody in Hollywood? I always had a crush on Common. Common? Yeah. Okay. Wait, Common is with, with um. He was with the tennis player. No, now no? he's with uh Angela. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CNN. Oh, Angela Yee. No. Oh, Angela Rye? Angela Rye. Angela, 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 yeah. Angela Rye, the, the, no. right. <laughs> the lawyer? The right here. Oh, no. Angela Rye, the lawyer? Yeah, Angela Rye, the lawyer. Oh, Angela. Um, there you go, girl. So, com yeah, she's coming for your man. Um, <laughs> no, okay, a, bo on, a body swap. Who in the industry would you swap for with just for one day? You could be anybody in the industry. One day? Mm -hmm. Just, okay. Oh, Beyonce. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't Beyonce. Say See, I'm like, always trying to push people that. into what Beyonce. Is it like? Who doesn't say that? You could be Beyonce for the day. Like, yeah, why would that's an absolutely. easy go to? And she's a Virgo, so, like, hey, I'm a Virgo. Are you a Virgo? Virgo. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> all those Virgos. Virgos exist. 
if people want to, you know, find your work, they want to hear you, they yes. want to um, learn more about, you know, your recovery to healing and, you know, uh, becoming their you know, most beautiful version of themselves, where could they find you? You can go to AudraBryant.com, A-U-D-R-A-B-R-Y-A-N-T.com. Follow me at, on Instagram and Twitter at Audra A. Bryant. And um, yeah, that's where I am. All right, you guys, be looking out for her <laughs> amazing and talented artist. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Mari. Get uh, relationship advice and coaching at thespicylife.com. And Dr. Ali, where can they find you? You can always hit me up at AllisonHicks.com. That's A L L Y C I N, Allison Hicks. It's also Allison Hicks on IG. If you need any consulting, any advice, anything like that, I'm here for you. Boop. And there you have it. You have just been spiced. <laughs> the Spicy Life.